What's up everybody? In this video, what I wanted to help a lot of you new developers out with is understanding what is full stack development. So maybe you wanna be a full stack developer, maybe you've heard of this term full stack development, and you're like, what the heck is it? I've heard it's like front end and back end, how much do you have to know? I really just wanna cover the basics here so you have a good foundation moving forward. So without any further ado, Let's dive into it. Now look, in order to understand what full stack development is, it's really good to have a basic understanding of what a web application is. So, and when I say web application, what I mean is let's, let's say you go to youtube.com in your browser. Many of you probably think of youtube.com and YouTube in general as a website. Right, like I put that in my browser, that is a website. But in truth, something like YouTube, where there's literally billions of hours of content stored somewhere that's not on your computer, obviously, that's accessible within milliseconds, that's an entire system that you're not seeing. So just keep in mind that when we talk about full stack development, we're talking about web applications, which are mostly what you interact with on the internet. So say you go to youtube.com, what is full stack development in relation to a web app? So a web app has two major components to it that you may have heard about, right? So you've heard about the front end. So when you go to that link in your browser, that is what you're viewing. You are viewing the front end, which is the user interface, right? It's also called client side or client side code. Now, if you start to learn to code, that's where you have learned HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's where that comes into play, where you know, whatever the user interacts with, that's the front end. Now, that's nice, that's pretty, but that's really just the tip of the iceberg in terms of having YouTube be functional and having those billions or even probably trillions of hours of video that's available to you. And what helps support that is the back end, or also what's known as server side code. So when you request a video, when you clicked on my video here, that was the website that you clicked on, but the website needed the actual data, right? The actual bits, the ones and zeros that compromised my video. And in order to get that, it had to go to some remote server in a remote location and say, okay, I want Andy's video, give me that information. And it's probably a couple gigabit worth of information, so it's a lot, so it had to be transported over the internet. The thing that handled all of that, the server, is what you'd call the backend. And that encompasses the web server that's serving that information, that encompasses the database that houses that video that you were looking for. So the way I like to explain this to people is there's a front end and there's a back end. Now, why do we call, like, what is, where does full stack come in here? So the full stack developer or full stack development really refers to a developer who is proficient in both the front end and the back end. So that means that they can write code for the user interface. They can update the look and feel of the application, but they also have skills that they could work in the back end. So they can work with the API. They can update the API. They can add endpoints. They can change things in the database. They have the proficiency and skill that anywhere in between those two things, they have enough knowledge to make it work. Now, there is no flat definition for what is required as far as a skill set. In fact, the term full stack software developer is very controversial in the field because some people say it's a made up term, it's a buzzword, and I'm not gonna get into what, what I believe. It's here to stay as far as I can tell. But um, one last thing I would say about full stack development in case it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. The reason we call it full stack is because if you were to lay out the front and the back end and all the different components that are involved, it would look like a stack of pancakes, right? Like each part would sort of it would start at the very top and go to the bottom. So so at the very top would be like what is runs on your browser. So your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now that's pretty much all that really I'd say is involved in the front end. Uh, below that, you have the internet. So you have to have pretty good knowledge of the internet, which means that you have to know how it works, how the front end connects with the back end. Um, and then from there, as far as the actual back end goes, there's much, many more pancakes there, right? So you've got like your API, you've got your web server, you've got your database, you've got the operating system that the database or the server is running on. So somebody who would consider themselves or who is called full stack developer would have proficiency of skills throughout the stack. Doesn't mean they know everything at an expert level. I don't really think that's possible. But again, it's not something I will get it to into this video. I'll we'll get into that in future videos, actually. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I guess um, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope it gives you some more information. By the way, if you have enjoyed the video, I do ask you to leave a like, hit the subscribe button as well if you want more content from me. And also, by the way, if you are looking to become a full stack web developer and you are serious and you're committed to it, you're not just uh, half-heartedly committed, right? I have a mentorship program for those of you guys who are interested. I will leave a link in the description below so you can get more information about how to potentially join if it makes sense. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and Peace out as always, everybody.